I move to member statements. And I recognize the member for Kitchener South Espen. Thank you, Speaker. Um, this weekend, the Waterloo Region hosted the Spring Games of the Special Olympics Ontario, and uh, myself and uh, my friend Corey attended the opening ceremonies. And uh, frankly, we were we were blown away. So it was held in Waterloo, originally scheduled uh, prior to the pandemic, but rescheduled, and uh, incredibly well organized by Waterloo Regional Police, with uh, Chief Mark Crowell heading it up for the first time. And I was. Um, amazed by how organized everything was and the amount of passion and dedication that had gone into it. Uh, we were able to witness the law enforcement torch run uh, and athletes entering the arena to light the torch. Um, and the torch run is something that has been going on for for years now to uh, to support the, uh, the Special Olympics. It's a really interesting partnership between um, uh, police as sort of the uh, community members that, that bring everything together. Um, the one thing that everybody kept saying as we watched the athletes come in uh, was uh, people saying that their faces hurt um, because they couldn't stop smiling, uh, and I was one of those. In a, in a time where people are uh, somewhat uh, dour and cynical, it was quite amazing to see a group of of athletes who are so incredibly delighted to participate in something that they love and to have that much enthusiasm. It also marked the retirement of CEO Glenn McDonnell, uh, who has spent 35 years supporting the Special Olympics Ontario, um, and the love that these athletes had for him was just incredible to see. So thank you to Mr. McDonnell, thank you to WRPS, and thank you to all of the amazing athletes that competed this weekend in Waterloo Region. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Lon uh, London Nord Centre. Speaker, I rise today to speak about punishing and mercenary social assistance rates. Even after the 21.6% Harris cuts of the 90s, people are far, far worse off now. Most disturbingly, these conservative cuts carry judgment, creating anger and resentment towards those who simply require our help and assistance. Conservatives tried to strip away our community's desire and responsibility to care for the less fortunate. Poisonous words like handout deliberately infected common discourse. After 15 long years of Liberal rule, those on social assistance were worse off than during the Harris regime. Many empty, vacuous words were spoken, but Liberals only decided to help those who needed the most at the end of their rule with a basic income pilot project. Instead of actually fixing the well-known problem with funding, they committed to a study. Premier Ford promised that he would let the study carry out, but it didn't take long until that promise was broken and it was shut down. Shut down because Conservatives didn't want to see the positive results. They took away hope. How can anyone stabilize their life when they're consistently struggling and at risk? Ontarians on social assistance live in deep, deep poverty and their monthly housing bills are often more than what they receive. This is before even attempting to buy food. It's survival mode for most, if not all. This government pats itself on the back for indexing people well below the poverty line. Matri has found that Ontario Works recipients would need $17,000 more per year just to reach the poverty line. I want to thank the United Way for their Make It Livable campaign to double social assistance rates. I call on the government members to remember our common humanity. Think of those in desperate need and double social assistance rates now. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for chatham kent Lamington. Hi, good morning, Speaker. On May 24th and May 25th, Chatham Kent celebrated a rare and unique ceremony in honor of one of our residents, George Osei, a native of Ghana and proud Ontarian. In Ghana, the installation of a new chief is marked by a ceremony called an installment. This is a significant event in the community. It signifies the transfer of power and authority to a new chief. The ceremony involves playing traditional music, song, dance, a community feast, and wearing traditional attire. During the ceremony, the new chief is recognized and given symbols of authority, such as a crown and a traditional stool. The event is also a time to celebrate unity and reaffirmation of community values. George Osei was originally from the town of Atabubu, Ghana, and he could trace his roots back to the region's royal family. George has been a pillar of Chatham-Kent and exemplified the virtues of leadership, integrity, and dedication to his work and his family, committed to the advancement of all, and the well-being of all people in our multicultural community. Chatham-Kent has a long history of welcoming those from every corner of the world. 
Congratulations to George and your family. I thank you for contributing to Chatham Kent's rich tapestry as we continue to celebrate the history and traditions of all people who call beautiful Chatham Kent and Ontario home. Thank you. Thank you. I will just take a moment before we move to the next member's statement to ask the members in the House just to keep the volume down so we can hear the members speaking. Thank you. I appreciate your orderly uh, behavior. And now I'll move to the member first of the next member statement. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Uh, la semaine dernière, j'ai visité le club Imical de nouveau sobri et j'ai été impressionné par toutes les activités qu'il offre aux personnes âgées de notre communauté. Il offre des jeux comme les fléchettes, les billards et les actually offer dances and musics and commemorations. They organize new events. They encourage active life with yoga, with exercise, with golf, and with all kinds of events. This event is organized by volunteer. They have 333 members, and they have created a very good community based on solidarity. It is very interesting and very positive for the elder people. And this is also a place where people without a family or alone can participate in activities. This is the place where people can be happy, can make friends, where they can live in a community. You can feel their engagement and their participation, and they actually participate in the well-being of the elder people and they work in a very good group. It is interesting to see how they work all together, how they work with volunteer people. For more of 40 years, Club Mekor offers actually several services in order to help the Francophone community in Sud Sudbury and in order to help all Francophone people. Thank you very much to all my friends of the Mekor Club for everything you do for the elderly in our region. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Speaker, as we are approaching June, we are also approaching the Senior Volunteer Appreciation Week and Seniors Month in Ontario. This is a time dedicated to honouring our seniors. In 2021, this House passed my Senior Volunteer Appreciation Week Act, establishing the first week of June each year as Senior Volunteer Appreciation Week. I'm proud to say that this initiative has since inspired our communities to express their gratitude towards our senior volunteers. It has also encouraged seniors to remain active and involved in community life. To mark this special week, I will once again be presenting the Senior Volunteers Award to our cherished senior volunteers in Markham Unionville. Their efforts have had a profound impact across multiple generations, fostering a spirit of community and continuity. Their selfless sacrifice deserves our utmost respect and recognition. I sincerely encourage my fellow members to honour our seniors and senior volunteers this June. Mr. Speaker, I'm also grateful for the opportunity this legislature has provided to highlight their invaluable contribution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you, Speaker. Recently, I attended a seniors tea in Ottawa West Nepean with over 200 seniors in attendance. And as I made my way around the room chatting with people, I heard the same thing over and over again. Can you please get the Premier to fix our health care system? It was the same at the General Burns Community Fund Day on Saturday as hundreds of residents stopped by my tent. Person after person told me, our health care system is broken. What can we do to get the government to actually care? But while Ottawa residents are desperate for action, the health minister says there is no recruitment and retention problem for family doctors. 
This at a moment when 2.3 million people in Ontario have no family doctor. And every week, my office hears from constituents who are about to lose their family doctor or have already lost their family doctor. The Premier has also fought in court for two years against your right to know how many nurses and personal support workers we are short in Ontario, saying it would be economically damaging to share this information, even as they don't care how damaging it is to your health. The government is also paying more to private, for-profit clinics to perform the same surgeries that are being provided for less in our public hospitals, meaning that taxpayer dollars are going to fund profits instead of increasing the number of surgeries, even though our public hospitals have the capacity to do more. I agree with my constituents. It's time for the government to stop playing games with our health care system and get to work on fixing it so that you get the health care you deserve. Member Statements, the member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it's a pleasure to rise in the House and highlight some good news we had over the weekend in Brampton, uh, particularly for our sick community. The sick community have been in Canada for over 100 years, and they've played a vital role in shaping our province and the beautiful city that Brampton is today. This past weekend, I spent time at Brampton North's own local Gurdwara, the Gurdwara Guru Nanak Mission Centre. And, Speaker, the Sangat at Guru Nanak Mission Centre has been fundraising for years with the goal of building a new Gurdwara on the site. Countless individuals have given their time, their money, and their resources, and on Sunday, Speaker, we are finally able to announce and put shovels in the ground on the site of a brand new Gurdwara right at Gurunanak Street in Dixie. <laughs> Speaker, a Gurdwara is not only a place of worship, uh, but it's also a community hub where all are welcome and at any time uh, you can drop by for a free warm meal uh, and be greeted with open arms and blessings. Selfless service, or SEVA, is an important value for the sick community, and the construction of the new Gurdwara doesn't just mark a good day for the sick community, but a good day for religious freedom in Brampton and all across our country. I invite all members of this house to come up to Brampton North and learn more about the values of the sick community. Join me uh, for the Gurdwara Guru Nanak Mission Center's annual Niagara Kirtan Parade on June 9th. Uh, I hope to see you all there, and I'll end my speech today with the way I ended it on Sunday, Speaker. Wahi Gurujiki Kalsa, Wahi Gurujiki Fate. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. And what is it with this Premier's obsession with booze? Spending a billion dollars to put beer and wine in corner stores a little more than a year earlier than planned is simply unjustifiable. Well, you have to ask yourself, who benefits? Well, it's the same people who always do, the wealthy and well-connected insiders and friends and multinational corporations. It's the Premier's billion-dollar booze doggle, a billion dollars to speed this up by a little more than a year. What's the rush, Premier? Premier, you could have waited for the contract to end and made a better deal a deal that would have benefited all Ontarians, not just the wealthy, well-connected and large corporations. The Premier, well, he gave away the store in his billion-dollar booze dog, and Ontarians will pay. I wish the Premier had the same sense of urgency for the 2.3 million Ontarians who don't have a family doctor, or fixing our crumbling schools or for helping children with exceptional needs who aren't getting the help they need in our schools, or for keeping rural emergency rooms and hospitals open. A billion dollars could have been better spent on the things that matter most to Ontario families. Thank you. Order. Order. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May 17, 1974 is a day that many Cambridge residents will never forget. It started as a beautiful Sunday day, but Mother Nature had other plans. On that fateful day 50 years ago, a flash flood swept through the city, literally swallowing up all of downtown Galt. I was a teenager at the time, and I remember my friends and I riding our bikes downtown when we witnessed the most incredible scenes. 
There was people in canoes, motorboats, rescuing people from their homes and from their businesses. There was cars literally floating down the streets. Fortunately, no deaths resulted from the flood, but it did cause more than $6 million in property damage. And that was a lot of money back in the 70s. Recently, the people of my riding gathered at the Fire Hall Museum to mark the 50th anniversary of the Great Flood of 74. They reminisced about what they saw and what happened on that devastating day. Speaker, the events of May 17, 1974 were a once-in-a-lifetime experience for many people of Cambridge, and I thank the volunteers in my community who have worked hard to preserve the memories of that day. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On May 18th, the Canadian Egyptian Heritage Association once again hosted Canada's largest Egyptian festival, the sixth annual Discover Egypt Festival at Celebration Square in Mississauga. Over 28,000 people gathered to enjoy the Egyptian music, listen to entertaining performers, eat traditional food, and celebrate Egyptian culture. The following day, they visited the Egyptian Museum in Mississauga, where visitors had an opportunity to view many of the artifacts and learn about Egyptian history with a light and sound presentation on the exhibits on display. This was a great weekend for Egyptian Canadians to showcase their food, music, culture, and heritage to Canadians. I look forward to seeing the festival again next year. And of course, we all preparing for the Egyptian Heritage Month coming next month, approaching in July. On a related topic, I want to acknowledge the important work of Philip Batir Christian College, a school in Mississauga with over 420 students which have been faithfully serving our Mississauga community for over 25 years. Throughout this time, they have educated more than 10,000 students. We celebrate their service jubilee last week by watching a lovely performance by their students at the Living Arts Centre and enjoying gala dinner. I am happy to have watched and supported their resilience and success <coughs> over years. I thank them for their work supporting Egyptian, Arabic and Coptic communities in Mississauga. They will soon be opening a second campus in Ottawa and I wish them well for the next 25 years. Thank you, Mr. Sweet. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements. Introduction.